Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. We thank Allah, the one who has unlimited source of grace, mercy, and blessings. All matters will return to Him. And Allah is well aware and know and record everything that we all do. I bear witness there is no creator except Allah, the one and only, with no partners, the Almighty, and a sure truth. I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the servant and messenger of Allah. We send regards, blessings to Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali, and all the righteous companions, and who follow them with righteousness and goodness to the day of judgment. My dear brothers and sisters of Islam, our talk today, inshallah, is about how to cure stress, sadness, depression, unhappy emotions, and destructive feelings. We will explore the symptoms of these diseases and illustrate its treatment from verses of the Quran and what is narrated on the tongue of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. This subject is very important because of the danger of these diseases as the individual become captive and prisoner of his emotion, leading him to a state of despair, anguish, failure, disappointment, and loss of all hope. When the soul deprives the body from physical stimulation, it materializes illness and in the extreme, a severe case of depression, a loss of all hope in life. Very serious subject, the Imam providing from the Quran and the Sunnah the cure, insha'Allah, as last week we were talking about also an illness that our Imam provided a cure for from the Quran and the Sunnah for those who were listening and taking notice. It's a jewel of a sermon for all of us, for our actual living experience that we go through day in and day out again for who ponder, listen, and comprehend, insha'Allah. Imam Dindal Qayyim said, four issues which can destroy the body, four issues that can demise the body, stress, sadness, hunger, and lack of sleep. We all can agree on that. Stress, sadness, hunger, and lack of sleep. Our materialistic civilization, with all what it possesses of economic power, medical advancement, military might, and knowledge, cannot find a sure cure to the diseases of the soul. Drugs, lots of drugs for depression and anxiety. This is diseases of the soul with no cure. It just turn you into a zombie turn you into an inactive pro uh, lack of productivity of a person. Our simple and truthful faith, the faith of Islam, established a spiritual cure for these mental diseases, prescribing the best of treatment, which is to surrender the soul to its creator, getting closer to him in remembrance, supplication, and taking refuge in his protection. Total submission and surrender to your creator, the reason of your existence. That is the solution. Islam shows this treatment putting it ahead of all other prescription as the extent of stress and depression is, the subject, is subject to the degree of people's attachment to the glitter and the material life position as well as being absent-minded of the promise of the Almighty Allah. This meaning is very clear in the Quran. In Surah Taha, verse 124, that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying what can be translated. But he who, who turns away from my remembrance, the Almighty talking, about he who is turned away from his remembrance. Verily for him is a life of hardship. Allah is swearing, verily for him is a life of hardship. And we shall bring him blind to the assembly on the day of judgment. This is a promise from our Creator. 
But he who would turn away from the remembrance of me, Allah, verily for him is a life of hardship. And we shall bring him blind to the assembly on the day of judgment. This verse clearly, directly indicates an empty heart of the remembrance of Allah, the absence of supplication to him, the Almighty, and to praise him, glorify him, are clear signs and sure paths to stress and anxiety, sadness, and non-existence of peace of mind. A sure way that our Creator who know our soul and our body and our mind tell us exactly what would happen when we are absent-minded of His remembrance. All these diseases will materialize and we wonder how we can get a cure. With this sad existence, people are plagued with worries about the unknown, the unknown future, and preoccupied with relentless effort to reach or, or to reach and accomplish what they perceive a solution to calm their fears, not knowing that they actually magnify it and increase it, increase their lack of sleep, increase their stress, and increase and, and, and being deprived. Of, of peace of mind totally if man know the truth and when we talk about man know the truth we're talking about you and me not somebody out there if man know the truth he would be at peace accepting what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala predestined and the truthfulness of Allah's promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in surah al zariyat Verse 22 and 23, what can be translated? Allah said, And in heaven is your substance, and that which you are promised, and by the Lord of the heaven and the earth, this is the very truth. This is the word of Allah. It is not the opinion of the Imam. This is the word of Allah in Surah Al-Zariyat, verse 22 and 23. We always give you the name of the, of the chapter and the verse. So inshallah, you go back and you do your homework. The sermons is not just for casual listening. It's a way of life. We have a scholar who provides to us jewels. For he, he ponder, who ponder, understand, take notice, and believe the promise of Allah. When he said, in heaven is your substance and that which you are promised and by the Lord of the heaven and the earth, this is the very truth. Imam al-Jarir narrated that al-Hasan al-Basri said about this verse, that I heard the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that he said, destruction and demise to people. That's a, a supplication against those who do not understand or believe the promise of Allah. The Prophet said, demise and destruction to people. Allah swore to them and they did not believe him. Comprehend, reflect on what the Prophet is saying. Destruction and demise to people. Allah swore to them and they did not believe him. The Almighty, the creator of the heaven of the earth. Our creator, the one and only Allah. My dear brothers and sisters. This is the state of mind of whoever is absent-minded of the remembrance of Allah and does not take refuge in his protection, leaving him open to the company of the evil, the company of the devil, filling his heart with wickedness, whispers, sadness, depression. The devil keep on pro and approaching him from every possible way, even by the way of dreams and nightmares leaving him to a life of fear and hallucination with every moment of sleep, leading him to a chronic insomnia and fatigue, all this physical and mental illness that put us down, that keep us behind, that prevent us from achieving the best that we can. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, clarified this devilish input as it is illustrated in, 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 in Sahih Muslim. That the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, describing different kind of dreams. As one of them is the work of the devil. Just to cause you depression 
and sadness at all time. So you cannot escape by day or by night, leading you to a complete depleted state of mind and body. He who is among us, who take refuge in Allah, but mix it with sins and shortcoming, he would be plagued with this state of suffering to be a makeup, inshallah, for the sins that led him to that state of mind from the beginning. Imam Ahmad narrated on the authority of Aisha, may God be pleased with her and her father, that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, if the sin of the servant increased and none to make up for his good deed, none to make it, to make up for it of good deeds, Allah gives him the trial of sadness to erase his shortcoming. That's what we are hoping, that some of the suffering and some of the stress and anxiety will be a savior for us and a makeup to erase a lot of our shortcomings that we commit day in and day out. Dear brothers and sisters, among the sources of depression which may face people to this overwhelming, to, to, to lead people to such a state is the overwhelming debts and the difficulty or the inability to pay it back. Debt can be a sure way of, of, of unhappiness. A state which can also be multiplied in suffering in proportion to the degree of being absent-minded of the remembrance of Allah. We can create our own stress but that can be also magnified by being away from the remembrance of where our income comes from, where the source of our sustenance comes from. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, prescribed a medicine for this kind of stress by turning to Allah in faith, turning Allah in earnest, and taking refuge in, the, in His might, the Almighty, and protection. Imam Abu Dawood narrated on the authority of Abu Sa'id al Khudri that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, encountered, entered the mosque one day and encountered the man among the Ansar. His name was Abu Umama. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, inquired, O oh, Abu Umama, why do I see you sitting in the mosque outside the time of prayer? The man was sitting in the mosque and it was not the time of prayer. He responded, stress and death which overwhelmed me, O Prophet of Allah. The Prophet responded, Can I teach you words? If you said it, if you say it, Allah will take away your stress and fulfill for you your debt. The brother who have the child, it's distracting all of us from the beauty of this khutbah. So please, if you cannot control that child, please take him outside until you can control them for the benefit of everybody, inshallah. Thank you. So the Prophet asked, Abi Sa'id al khadri may I teach you words that if you repeat it, Allah will take away your sadness and fulfill the debts for you. Abu Umama said, yes, O Prophet of Allah. The Prophet responded, the Prophet said, peace be upon him, Say in the morning and at night, say these words, say this supplication. O oh Allah, I seek refuge in, your, in you from stress and sadness. O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from inability and laziness. O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from fear and being a miser. O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from devastation of debt and the demise of man. It's all supplication seeking the help from the ultimate authority. If you notice, Imam, Abu Umama said, I did that, what the Prophet commanded me and what he, taught, what he taught me, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took away my stress and fulfilled my debt. Abu Umama took this word to heart, believed it, have conviction in its truth, with no doubt, it is all about the intention and how you receive the message. As truth was complete trust and his wishes was actually been fulfilled and his hope, hopes were answered. 
we can find today that he who repeats the same supplication today, but does not experience any result, and the reason is, he said it with doubt, hesitation, and lack of trust, which is a prescription of failure and disappointment. When somebody gives you advice, and you have doubt, mistrust, that is the prescription of disappointment, even if you listen to that advice. If the supplication was said with certainty, trust and patience, he would enjoy the ease and the goodness as Abu Umama did. My dear brother and sister, there is not a disease among the diseases of the heart and the soul of stress and depression unless it has treatment in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Among these sure prescription and medicine is what narrated by Imam Ahmad and Imam Ibn Hibban on the authority of Ibn Mas'ud, may God be pleased with all of them, that he said that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, there is not a person who suffers from shortage and sadness and says he's giving a prescription to anyone who suffered from shortage, shortage of substance, income, wants, needs, and sadness, and he said these words, unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him the ease. The Prophet said, O oh Allah, I am your servant, son of your servant, all my affair in your hand, your judgment will reach me, and you, O oh Allah, predestined for me is just. I ask you, O oh Allah, with every name that is yours, you called yourself with, or taught to any of your servants, or revealed it in your book, or you kept it as your secret, that you make the Quran the spring of my heart, and the light of my soul, and the end of my sadness, sadness and the departure of my stress. Anyone who would supplicate sincerely, with trust, with patience, repeat these words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take his stress and sadness and replace it with ease and relief. Again, the trick is belief. The trick is conscious awareness of the promise of Allah and complete trust in its truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was asked, do we need to learn this supplication of Prophet of Allah? The companion never left a chance to get blessings and to get to harvest values and to harvest goodness unless they ask, O oh, Prophet of Allah, do we need to learn this supplication? Do we need to learn this word? The Prophet responded, yes, it is recommended that whoever heard it is to learn it. Again, this khutbah is not a casual khutbah, my dear brother and sister. It will be online if you want to reflect on it in Arabic and English in iccpez.com. Go, reflect, learn, save your soul, save yourself. May Allah make us among those who learn, comprehend, <laughs> and apply, inshallah. الحمد لله الذي نمت تتم الصالحات وأشهر لا إله إلا الله قيم وفتح السماوات وأشهر أن سيرنا نبينا محمد رسول الله اتق الله فوقه وتوكل عليه فكفاه واعتمل عليه فأواه اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبته الأئمة الهداة أيها المسلمون والمسلمات كلمة صغيرة ونحن نتحدث عن الهم والغم هناك هم يجب وجوبا أن يلزم كل مسلم وأن يعتري قلب كل مسلم إن خرج منه هذا الهم فهو ليس من المسلمين فمن لم يهتم بأمر المسلمين فليس منهم همك ليكن همك الذي يلزمك ويلازمك في هذا الوقت من الزمان ما يجري على المسلمين من الأحكام ما يجري على المسلمين من القتل والتشريد في آسيا بدءا من سوريا من الغوطة إلى منيمار 
ودر حول اسيا اينما درت بعقلك وقلبك واجعل ذلك هما ملازما لك الى افريقيا بدءا من الفاصل بين اسيا وافريقيا من مصر الى اخر دوله في افريقيا في الصومال وغيرها من بلاد الاسلام اجعل ذلك همك بالليل وبالنهار وتوسل الى الباري تبارك وتعالى ان ينصرهم اجعل همك بيت المقدس وما يجري عليه لابد ان يكون ذلك هما لكل مسلم همك على الدنيا وحزنك على الدنيا واسفك على الدنيا اسف عليك أما همك هذا فهو خير لك هو كرامة أن تكون داعيا لإخوانك ذاكرا همهم متوسلا إلى الله تعالى أن يرفع عنهم ما هم فيه وأن ينصرهم وأن يثبتهم وأن يهلك عدوهم هذا هم واجب أسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن ينصر الإسلام ويعز المسلمين وأن يحمي بيت المقدس مما يراد به اللهم آمين. The Imam is just making a, a, a comment because we all complain of stress, personal stress, personal difficulties, personal problems and this is Alhamdulillah we, we, we have the cure. For ourselves. But what is really more stressful and more sad is the, is the state of affair of the Islamic Ummah everywhere in the rest of the world, in Africa, in Asia, everywhere in the corner of the world, there is Muslims like you and me suffering either from deprivation, from hunger, from abuse, from dictatorships. And that's what we need to make our stress. So we can, inshallah, supplicate for them. So we can remember Allah with praise and glorifying for their sake. The sake of the rest of us who live in deprivation in severe environment. Our stress should be about what's happening and transpiring in Jerusalem, in, in, in Al-Quds. It's not a, a Palestinian issue or a land issue. It's a faith issue that we should be supplicating keeping it in our mind, our heart, turning unto Allah for sustenance, for help for all Muslims. That's what we need to be more concerned about. That's why we need to be with Allah so Allah will be with us. Assalamu alaikum.